convicts you're about to meet had both on their side, and that proved to be enough to set them free from prison today. But 18 years ago, when they were rebel teens in their town, accused of a gruesome satanic murder of three young boys, DNA tests weren't available, and there were no celebrities around to take up their cause. Here's our Jim Avalon for our series, Crime and Punishment. It's a case so stunning, so controversial, it became a major cause celeb, with actors and musicians like Johnny Depp, the Dixie Chicks' Natalie Maines, and Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder. And I'm also here to show my support for the West Memphis Three. Speaking out for the defendants, three little Cub Scouts hogtied and left in an Arkansas ditch, and three teenagers, enamored with satanic rituals, arrested. It made headlines all over the country, even becoming the subject of three HBO documentaries called Paradise Lost. We were like really the obvious choice because we stood out. I didn't kill these three little boys. The celebrities fighting for the teens' release claimed the kids were railroaded because of their mullets, dark clothes, and fascination with the occult. It makes me scared <laughs> that, you know, this could happen to any of us. And it did happen to these three young outcasts who came to be known as the West Memphis Three after their hometown along the Arkansas-Tennessee border. Damian Eccles, Jesse Miss Kelly, and Jason Baldwin, teenagers then, in their mid-30s today, convicted in what many labeled a literal witch hunt, no physical evidence against them, imprisoned for nearly two decades. Uh, I'm just tired. You know, this has been going on for over 18 years. And then we told them no that we were innocent, and they sent us to prison for the rest of our lives. Earlier today, there was Damien Eccles. But today, a bizarre final chapter with a stunning reversal. Four years after ABC News first broke word of DNA evidence that could exonerate them, the West Memphis Three walked free. The legal table that has become known as the West Memphis Three case is now finished. Does anyone believe that if the state had even the slightest continued conviction that they were guilty, that they would let these men free today. It was 1993. The three second graders are found drowned in a ditch in West Memphis. It was before Arkansas could handle DNA testing, no physical evidence to link the teens to the crime. They were the unusual kids in town, dressed in black. They listened to heavy metal music. They were goths before goths were, uh, were fashionable, and so they were easy targets. But one of the teenagers, Jesse Miss Kelly, borderline mentally disabled with a documented low IQ, confessed after four hours of police interrogation, implicating his friends. He would later recant, but the town was already convinced the three devil-worshipping kids were guilty. There seemed to be a whole scare in the community around a satanic panic. I hope y'all really believe in your master, the Satan. He's not going to help you. To me, this place as I stand is like hell on earth. All three would go to prison. Damien Eccles, called the ringleader, was sentenced to death row, held in solitary confinement for a decade. Johnny Depp became so convinced of Eccles' innocence, he gave voice to his prison journal. I can't remember what it's like to walk as a human being anymore. Then, finally, new hope. New attorneys forced the state to perform DNA tests not available in 1993 on hair from the victims. The findings are dramatic. None of it is a match to the imprisoned West Memphis Three. And in fact, the DNA points in a different direction. I don't think they would have let them walk free if they didn't understand that this would be a very powerful defense. Because not only would the prosecutors have a very difficult time linking these three to the crime, the defense could very legitimately point to someone else, someone specific, and say it's more likely that he did it than my clients. Which brings us to today in one of the most shocking and even confusing exonerations seen in the U.S. courtroom. The West Memphis Three would be allowed to walk out of prison 
but prosecutors agreed to sign off on the deal only if the defendants would plead guilty. Guilty plea to that guilty. Normally a judge will say, uh, you can plead guilty, but you need to tell me about what you did. You need to say that you did it. This is different. This is totally different. But this is the defendant saying, almost with a wink and a nod, yeah, we'll plead guilty in quotes. But the reality is, they're saying, we didn't do it. It's not perfect. It's not perfect by any means, but we can still try to clear our names. The only difference is now we can do it from the outside instead of having to sit in prison and do it. In fact, it was a deal the youngest of the West Memphis Three first resisted, wanting to fight for total exoneration until reminded that his childhood friend Damian Eccles had been in solitary confinement for 10 years. And at one point was three weeks from execution back in 1994. He didn't want to take this deal in the beginning. And I recognize and acknowledge that he did do it almost entirely for me. Mr. Bronco. This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. I wanted to cover the West Memphis Three because I know a lot of teens and younger people listening to this channel aren't aware of it. And I also know that there's a lot of people who are older who are familiar with this trial who probably were duped into the brainwashing thanks to propaganda films like Paradise Lost, which conveniently, you know, HBO sends out a camera crew to prove the innocence of three children who were involved in satanic ritual killings as well as rape of the children and we see people today every time i even mention it i've mentioned it in a few johnny depp videos that i've done people go crazy you didn't study the trial you don't know what's going on because people have devoted their life to studying this i don't need to devote my life to studying it i've seen the films i've read the autopsy reports i've looked at all the information that's been given and i've watched all of the other propaganda movies by people like Peter Jackson, who made Lord of the Rings, who took the time out of their day, or their lives, I should say, to make movies trying to profess the innocence of these people. Eddie Vedder, Johnny Depp, Marilyn Manson. Enough warlocks, witches, and scumbags for me to know that this is clearly the occult helping out the occult. And I personally believe that there's deep, deeper roots involved with Damien Eccles and some type of relationship as far as bloodlines go to Alistair Crawley himself. Now what's really sad about this story is that whenever you hear about the West Memphis Three, you hear about the actual killers who are portrayed as the victims. You never hear about these three young boys whose lives were stolen from them because of satanic ritual abuse people trying to perform Aleister Crowley's black magic on them by raping these children. They found sperm on the kids' pants. They originally said that these children were raped, and this entire story got manipulated because what happened was the media got control of it, Hollywood got control of it, and that's all they have to do. All they have to do is make a propaganda piece to sway people's you know, perception of what the story really is, right? So instead of being about these three kids who were brutally murdered, the story turned into what? Oh, these three kids were were profiled because they had long hair, they were gothic, they wore Metallica shirts, they were weird, and they were outcasts, so they were framed by the police because they fit the character description of what, you know, a murderer would look like. Or, you know, who could be responsible? We needed to pin it on someone. That is the, the entire story around it. Them blaming the cops for pinning on putting it on them because of how they looked and the fact that they had Aleister Crowley's books and followed his books. And it's deeper than that. But that's how lightly they can make the story so people go, oh, yeah, that's not fair. I used to be an outcast and wear a, a Marilyn Manson or Metallica t-shirt, too. They must be innocent. Never was really about the kids. And that's the that's this what breaks my heart about these stories. And these people are now walking free, despite their guilt, walking free. And every time you talk, you hear them interviewed, what are they talking about? 
oh, poor me, I was innocently put on death row because of how I looked and the stuff that I liked, which included Satanism and the occult and witchcraft and pedophilia. But nope, they walk free. Despite Damien Eccles' connection, he is a member of the OTO in Arkansas. A member of the OTO, Aleister Crowley's OTO. On the stand, listen to what he talks about. He made a blood oath with Aleister Crowley. These three boys made a blood oath, a contract with Crowley.
tried to do is pin this on family members because there's very weird family members attached to this story you know there's people who fit the stereotype of an abusive parent possibly a rapist and all this stuff and what happened was Depp Manson all of these guys got together hired lawyers to do run DNA tests on the shoelaces and all this stuff to get these kids off the hook but in reality what this was about was getting fellow Satanists off the hook. And what's sad about that is these Satanists have a greater bond than us Christians have. We're supposed to be the ones who love our neighbor and love one another, but all we ever see in the Christian community is attacks on each Christian. Oh, he's not reading the King James Bible. Oh, he's not doing this. Nobody talks about this stuff. Oh, call for an uprising, might curse once in a while and raise his voice. He must not be a real Christian. This is what these lukewarm Christians care about, fighting other Christians, causing division amongst us. And this is what these Satanists do. Bail each other out, have each other's back, are loyal to each other. And this story obviously has deeper roots because they wouldn't just, gr you know, think about all the murders that happen around the world, okay? They're going to send HBO to cover a story like this and to make the whole thing about these poor kids, these poor kids, these poor kids, and then bring in all these famous people to persuade the audience into believing that these kids were innocent. There is a reason that they had to get them out. And I personally believe the reason is that Eccles is related in some way or form to Crowley, and he's a high-ranking witch, or whatever you want to call high-ranking Satanist, high-ranking pansy as far as I'm concerned. You can see now that he's written a new book, a new book about magic. That's all he talks about, Satanism and magic. You see all his, his lame, you know, satanic symbols on his, on his Twitter page. Oh, yeah, he doesn't follow Crawley. Here's a picture of him doing the, uh, you know, the infamous pose that Crawley does. Here he is talking about love one another, right? What do I always say? That these Satanists are coming in the name of love. The Antichrist is coming in the name of love. And that's how people are being deceived. Because they're going, how could you be against love? They're all for love because it's a part of the deception. Love for them is tolerance. They want you to be tolerant to them. And accepting of what they do. They're not going to tell you that they're involved in pedophilia and all this stuff. They're going to come across as loving, caring, intelligent people. It's a scam. That's exactly what it is. So this guy comes out now. He's got magic books. And somehow nobody goes crazy and points to the teachings of Crawley, how they follow these teachings, how he's in the OTO, and specifically how these celebrities got him off the hook and his friends off the hook for this murder. They never talk about these kids. Some documentaries are going out saying, well, we think it was the father because something on the shoelace. It's all propaganda. There were people on the witness stand who actually said they heard Damien Eccles confess to the murdering of the three children because he was starting his own cult. He was bragging about this. But despite multiple people going on the, on the stand and saying that, they say, oh, they made it up. They had a vendetta against him. Or they make up these stories around him. When they're so, I mean, this is, these people have more guilt than OJ. 
okay? But you hear people constantly when this story comes up, 100% believe that they're innocent because of some stupid propaganda piece that HBO produced to try to show that Satanists are getting stereotyped and labeled. And of course, when you attach these celebrities to it, that's how they get the masses to go along with it. Oh, the Dixie Chicks think he's innocent? They must be innocent. Oh, Johnny Depp from Pirates of the Caribbean at 21 Jump Street? He thinks they're innocent? They gotta be innocent. Johnny wouldn't do that. Common theme with these people. All are Satanists. No big deal, right? Then they change up. You know, all the evidence and stuff gets changed up. Police initially suspected the boys had been raped. Later, expert testimony disputed this finding despite trace amounts of sperm DNA found on a pair of pants recovered from the scene. And then they somehow pass it off as saying that it was from animals, that animals were, you know, all over the bodies. I mean, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. And these people walk free. They walk free and get away with this stuff, and nobody cares. The story turns into these poor boys were, in, you know, they were innocently convicted. You can see that they're scumbags, for starters. I mean, pretty easy to see if you watch Paradise Lost and watch the trial. That they're scumbags. Trash. And Damien Eccles walks around getting matching tattoos with Johnny Depp and Eddie Vedder. Don't you see how they all work together? How they all have control over all of this stuff? They're above the law. That's what they believe. They're above the law. We're not. We're going to them. We're crap. We're nothing to them. And this is just a mockery of our judicial system. It's a mockery of Christians. It's a mockery to all of us. Everyone should be outraged about this. And this is an old story, but you know what? I had it on my mind recently. I was thinking about it. Every time I see Eccles' face, I just want to put my hand through my computer screen. Because I know guilt when I see it. I know manipulation when I hear it. Listen to every interview the guy has done. He's a liar. He's a liar and he's a fraud. But they talk about Crawley like, oh, he, he's wonderful. And, and oh, and, and he goes, oh, you know, I'm not really connected to him. He said, Alistair Crawley was the person who designed the magic. That magic be spelled with a K. He was also a big part of the reason I was sentenced to death. That's what he says. Meanwhile, he's in the OTO. He made a blood oath contract with the guy. He goes on to say, I was the town weirdo. I dressed in all black, had long hair, and listened to heavy metal music. As if this wasn't enough to make me to make me a suspect in a small, hardcore, fundamentalist town in the midst of the era of satanic panic, I also practiced magic. Some of the most damning evidence brought against me during the trial was my love of knowledge of crawling and the fact that I own Stephen King novels, right? So people hear that, they go, well, I own a Stephen King novel. Uh, Stephen King novels and Crawley's teachings are a little bit far apart, even though you're better off taking every Stephen King novel that ever existed and dumping manure on it. So again, this is how they've used my control. This is what they've done to people. This is how they can get Satanists and witches off the hook. By using the television, by creating propaganda beasts, by attaching what? false idols to the story to try to prove the innocence of someone wow i've never seen so many celebrities care so much about some cause have you there's people dying around the world people in third world countries who can't even can't, who can't eat who just die of starvation there's so much crime and so much stuff that goes on with amongst the elites which never get talked about of course because these people are amongst it but this specific story boy really band everyone together to hire lawyers out of their own pocket to get these kids that they never met off the hook for a crime they clearly were guilty for. Clearly, there were no other suspects at the time, but it's easy to point a finger at creepy parents when the father of, you know, one of them is just an absolute, he probably was put under MK Ultra or something after the whole thing went down because that guy was out of his mind, buyers. But the whole story is just unreal. This is the stuff that boils my blood. Well, I guess you could say everything does, right? Because pretty much every day I'm yelling and ranting about this stuff. But I just see no, you know, this doesn't mean all Christians need to unite in a sense. But it's just it's just more of a wake-up call as to who the real enemy is. These people are murdering kids. And all I see are Christians attacking Christians about what, you know, uh, but you don't sound Christian like uh, are you reading a King James only if not you're not a real Christian it gets, it's such a waste of time it's not speaking through the spirit these are the people that we need to point a finger at you know a hundred years ago this would never have happened these people would have been hung they would have been run up a tree now they get off the hook 
for doing it. And all they have to do is bring out their witches and warlocks from Hollywood. And everybody goes, yeah, they were innocent. Look at the tattoos on their arms, all these satanic symbols on their arms and their hands, on their necks. This guy's got a pentagram on his stomach or his chest tattooed. But that's normal, right? He said, oh, I thought it was cool. Oh, right. He thought the pentagram was cool. That's why he got it tattooed. On his chest, just like the satanic temple uses the pentagram, and they use the same excuse, right? Oh, it's nothing to do with black magic. We just, we just love it. We think it's cool. Yeah, sure. Guess we were all born yesterday. Well, guess what? I wasn't. And this fight is not over. I'm taking the fight to these people. I know there's so much stuff going on. There's so many things to cover. I started this channel to go after Satanists. Okay, to expose Satanism, Zionism, all of these things that are involved in the New World Order. But specifically, you know, my blood has been boiling more and more over the last year, over the, what's happened with the after school Satan program, with the Satanic Temple, with people like this, like this scumbag Ackles walking the street, having his own podcast, talking about magic, promoting magic, promoting black magic, promoting Satanism, lying, 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 and people falling into the deception and then going, well, we preach love here. Listen to this guy I call for an uprising. He yells, he screams, sounds like a hateful maniac. Yeah, well, you know, in a story, I, I haven't heard of Eccles or any of these guys come out and talk about these kids who were murdered. They go, oh, these poor kids, these poor, poor, poor kids. No, it's about them. You know why? Because they killed the kids. That's pretty clear. So go ahead, bring in the Dixie Chicks. These three men, wit male witches, known as the Dixie Chicks, Bring in Marilyn Manson, this pedo creep. Bring them all in to prove your innocence. You're not going to fool those of us who have discernment and those of us who are awake. And I want to keep exposing them. I want to go after them. I'd love to have Eccles on my channel. I'd love to. Come on on if you're out there. Come on on for an interview. The interview will be me asking you about Crawley. Asking you about your tendencies to molest young children and use black man. Of course you won't come on. I can't get anyone to come on my channel, to be honest. I see all these channels that get interviews with these people. Nobody wants to talk to me. My channel is only bigger than most of these channels. But, hey, I don't blame people. I'd be afraid to talk to me, too. Because they know that they're going to get... Truth is going to get pulled out of them. They're not going to be able to sit here and deflect crap on me. They're not going to be able to sit here and ping-pong stuff back and forth. Because I'm going to grill them. That's why nobody comes on. Nobody asks to be interviewed on here who's involved with any of this stuff.